Hi, fifth graders. Welcome back to Wit and Wisdom in Sync. This is Module 1, Cultures in Conflict. I'm Miss Foley. Are you ready to get started? You will need some materials for this lesson. You'll need handout 5A, handout 5B. And that should be the rest of what you need for class today. A new set of lessons. We've been studying how the United States westward expansion impacted Native Americans who lived in the West. And now we're going to focus our attention on one specific tribe, the Nez Perce. And we're going to learn about their traditional culture, their ways of life, and the land they called home for thousands of years. The focusing question that will guide our study is, how did the Nez Perce homeland sustain their lifestyle and culture? Well, what do we mean when we talk about a group's homeland? What does it mean to sustain something? Let's learn more about these two important words. Homeland is the country or place someone is originally from. You may have heard the terms native land, land of origin, or birthplace. Where is your homeland? You know, noticing that this is a compound word brings even more meaning to it. Think about it this way. It is the land that is home. And we'll learn what that land meant to the Nez Perce. The next word is sustain, which means to support or nourish. We'll learn how the Nez Perce homeland sustained them or helped them live well and allowed their culture to flourish. If you'd like to record these two words in your in sync journal or wherever your classroom teacher has instructed you to record vocabulary, please feel free to pause the video to do that now. We're going to learn about the Nez Perce homeland by watching a film clip called Landscape of History. Before we begin, you'll need to create a new notice and wonder chart in your InSync journal. Pause the video now to set up a chart just like this one, titled Nez Perce Homeland. As you watch, pay attention to the land. Where is the Nez Perce homeland? What is it really like? Jot down what you notice and wonder on your T-chart. There is a landscape that begins in the deep canyons and fertile valleys of Oregon and rolls like a ribbon through Idaho until it reaches the high plains of north central Montana. Embedded in the fabric of this land and the people who live here is the memory of one of our nation's most enduring stories. It is an epic story of hope, despair, and ultimately loss of a homeland. Even though it happened long ago, this story remains as current as today's headlines. This is the Nez Perce National Historic Trail. And as you travel the landscape, this journey grows more significant with time. For thousands of generations, the people who call themselves Nimi Pu use this trail across the mountains to visit friends and relatives on the plains, to trade, and to hunt the buffalo. They learned to follow the trail in the days of foot travel, long before horses. According to legend, Grizzly bears found a brave lost boy and showed him the path through the mountains and how to survive in this rugged country. Then, in 1877, the path became a trail of sadness. In that year, 750 Nez Perce men, women, and children 
made a heroic yet futile flight seeking freedom and peace far from their homeland. But this trail is not just about yesterday's journeys. Today's and tomorrow's travelers may also find meaning here. The Nez Perce National Historic Trail is a landscape of history that carries understanding to those who travel it. The Nez Perce tribe's native homeland extended across a plateau country of ancient volcanic rock, deep canyons, and mighty rivers between the Cascade and Rocky Mountains. Separate Nez Perce bands once lived from Oregon's Wallawa Valley up and down the Snake River Canyon to the Clearwater Valley in Idaho. Their land spread north and south along the Bitterroot Range, encompassing the rugged Loxa and Selway drainages and the extensive Salmon River country. It was, and still is, a beautiful and abundant land, rich in wildlife, productive forests, and lush meadows. Nez Perce ancestors thrived here for thousands of generations. I wish I could see more of this beautiful land. The mountains, the rivers, the canyons, and the valleys. What did you notice and wonder about the Nez Perce homeland from the video? I noticed that the Nez Perce homeland was huge. It covered parts of what we now call Idaho, Washington, Montana, and Oregon. I wonder, do the Nez Perce still live in these areas? I also noticed that the Nez Perce trail through their homeland was really rugged. It went through forests and it went through mountains. And the narrator said that according to legend, a brave boy was led to the trail by a grizzly bear. Hmm. Huh. That made me wonder how and when that legend was first told. What else did you notice and wonder? Now that you've seen what the Nez Perce homeland was like, we'll read more about it. The question that's going to frame our reading today is, What's happening in the texts Mimipu Homeland and Legend Times? Mimipu is what the Nez Perce called themselves, and it means the people. It was the French-Canadian fur traders who called them Nez Perce. You can find these texts on handout 5A. Pause the video now if you need to retrieve it. Do you have handout 5A? Great. Read along with me as I read beginning with the Nimipu homeland, Nez Perce country. Long before Meriwether Lewis and William Clark ventured west, before the English established a colony at Jamestown, before Christopher Columbus stumbled over the New World, the Nez Perce, who call themselves the Nimipu, lived in the prairies and river valleys of north central Idaho, Montana, northeastern Oregon, and southeastern Washington, an area of approximately 17 million acres. In 1805, when Lewis Clark met the Nez Perce, they encountered a people well integrated into their environment. Mimipu traditions and knowledge of the surroundings were well honed over thousands of years. Well honed means like perfected. The Nimipu homeland's abundant resources sustained their economy, lifestyle, and culture. Legend Times Nimipu oral history records their presence in Nez Perce country since time immemorial. It's as if it's before any recorded time at all. Archaeological evidence indicates that people have occupied the plateau culture area of the Northwest for at least the last 11,000 years. According to the legend, the world before humans was inhabited by animals that possessed human traits. The primary animal was Itseyeye, coyote, who at times had supernatural powers. The Nimipu creation story reveals that when a monster began to consume the animals, 
coyote tricked the animals, or tri excuse me, coyote tricked the monster into swallowing him. While in the monster's stomach, he killed the monster and set the animals free. Coyote carved the monster into pieces and scattered the parts throughout the land where they became the various tribes. Itsieye left the heart of the monster near Kamaya, Idaho, and sprinkled the blood around the surrounding countryside and created the Nimipu, the Nez Perce people. These stories provided instruction in Nimipu culture and often conveyed moral teachings and practical information. The Nimipu have been part of this land for countless generations. Their traditional homeland occupied nearly 13 million acres in what today is Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. The earliest peoples lived in small group and family units. They were mostly reliant on big game hunting, which remember big game, big game would have been large animals like buffalo, as a primary means of subsistence. And the primary means of subsistence means that's basically what they lived on and what they ate. Starting around 6,000 years ago, many aspects of the historic Nez Perce way of life began to appear in the region. This included the use of a much broader base of locally abundant plant, fish, and game resources. This shift to a more encompassing use of resources was well adapted to the Nez Perce homeland. It enabled the ancestral Nez Perce to develop a much more sedentary lifestyle, as evidenced through the emergence of large winter village sites and the increasing use of semi-subterranean pit houses. Hmm. Sedentary lifestyle generally means that the people didn't move around. They stayed where they were a lot more. And that came as a result of the emergence of large winter village sites and the use of semi-subterranean pit houses. That means the pits were dug in the ground and the houses were created around those pits. By about 3,500 years ago, the bow and arrow came into common use in the Nez Perce country. This technology eventually replaced the atlatl around 2,000 years ago. Over the last 1,000 years, Nez Perce culture became increasingly reliant on seasonally abundant fish and root resources. As the population grew, large villages located along the Clearwater, Snake, and Salmon rivers and their tributaries became the norm. A common thread throughout the Nimipu existence has been a keen knowledge of the resources present in their homeland. This included a thorough understanding of when, where, and how to obtain and use these items. Local stone, minerals, and various plant species were crafted to make clothing, baskets, tools, hunting, and fishing implements, shelter, and other personal items. questions did you have as you read? One thing I wondered about is the story of the coyote and the monster. I wondered, do the Nez Perce still tell that story today? I also wondered why the Nez Perce began to settle in villages rather than travel and hunting. What questions did you ask yourself as you read? If you didn't get a chance, pause the video now and use these sentence frames to note one or two questions that you had as you read. I hope you made a note of a couple of other questions too. We may very well answer them as we continue learning together. In the text and in the film, we learn that the Nez Perce homeland was rich in natural resources. Natural resources are those materials found in nature that can be used by people in a wide variety of ways. Some examples are soil, water, different kinds of plants. What were some of the other natural resources that you can think of? Think back to the text we just read and the film. 
what are some of the natural resources that the Nez Perce homeland offered? How did those resources sustain the Nez Perce? In other words, how did they use those natural resources to help them live? Pause the video and jot down a few ideas in your journal. I thought about the land itself as a natural resource. The prairies and the mountains, they were perfect for living and for hunting. And the rivers with clean water for fishing and just surviving. You know, the trees also seemed really, really plentiful, especially in the mountainous region. Timber or wood could be used to build shelters, tools, all kinds of other things as well. All these natural resources sustained the Nez Perce, or helped them survive. And you know what? They helped them survive and live very well. Natural resources on the Nez Perce homeland sustained their lifestyle and culture, including the stories that people told, their food and drink, the types of homes and shelters that they lived in, the tools that they made and used, and the clothing they made and wore. We're going to reread the text under Legend Times on handout 5A. As we do, we're going to think more about the relationship between the land and its natural resources and the people's way of life. We'll use these symbols to show connections between the natural resources and the Nez Perce lifestyle and culture. For example, if you notice, a connection between the natural resources and the types of homes or shelters that the Nez Perce built, you could put an H next to that part of the text. We'll reread the first part of Legend Times together, and I'll model a few annotations to show you what I mean. According to the legend, the world before humans was inhabited by animals that possessed human traits. The primary animal was Itseyeye, coyote, who at times had supernatural powers. The Nimipu creation story reveals that when a monster began to consume the animals, coyote tricked the monster into swallowing him. While in the monster's stomach, he killed the monster and set the animals free. Coyote carved the monster into pieces and scattered the parts throughout the land where they became the various tribes. Itseyeye left the heart of the monster, monster near Ka Kamaya, Idaho, and sprinkled the blood around the surrounding countryside and created the Nimipu, the Nez Perce people. These stories provided instruction in Nimipu culture and often conveyed moral teachings and practical information. Wow, this is very interesting. And that coyote legend is incredible. It's kind of gruesome. I wonder how long this story has been told. It seems like it's very important because it's a story that's very detailed and it truly explains how the Nez Perce people believed that their tribe and other tribes were created. I can imagine storytellers would have everyone's attention when this legend was told. So I marked this paragraph with an S for stories and storytelling. It shows a very deep connection between the Nez Perce homeland and the stories that were important in their culture. Look at that last line. It says that coyote and monster stories were used for teaching. Later, with your classroom teacher, you'll actually get a chance to hear an as per storyteller perform this story of Coyote and Monster, so stay tuned. For this check for understanding, you're going to identify how the Nez Perce homeland sustained or shaped different aspects of the people's culture and lifestyle. Your job is to reread and annotate the rest of Legend Times. Use these symbols, S for stories and storytelling, F for food and drink, H for homes and shelter, T for tools, and C for clothing. 
Pause the video now to complete this check for understanding. And join me again when you're ready to share the examples that you found. Yeah, thank you. Where is my recording window?